that you're just doing that rotation over and over again. You're maintaining your new mist on, on everybody. You're going to Manatee when you need to envelop mist. Yulon as well. Thunder focus the envelop mist if you need, if there are kicks available. If there aren't, you're just going to go for Vivify, Vivify into an envelop mist. Look at these, look at these numbers, man. Miss Weaver is so crazy. I love it. I love casting Miss Weaver so much. You always going on, everybody, this mystical. Everyone seemed to enjoy the short fist weaving guide I had. So this is a guide for solo shuffle casted Miss Weaver. I'll do another video on casted Miss Weaver in our normal twos and threes. But for today, we're gonna do solo shuffle, everything you're gonna need to know to be successful in solo shuffle. For those of you who know me, I greatly prefer casting over fist weaving. It's just something I'm more comfortable with. I have like three or four <laughs> Miss Weavers that are casted in rank one range and shuffle. So it's definitely something I'm familiar with. And you're gonna start with stats. So with your stats, you're gonna want to play haste verse mastery crit. You never you never really want crit, but you definitely want to go heavy haste. So if I go into my shuffle set, I have about I have probably the most haste you can have. I have 37% haste. You do not need this much haste for shuffle i would say you want like 31 percent haste and i think at 32 percent haste you actually get a 10 percent penalty for all the haste you get so this is what i run i run every single piece is crafted haste so i run i run the four set very important four sets very good for cast and miss weaver and then i go crafted neck crafted i don't have the crafted cloak i just have the the bloody token cloak but i actually could craft the cloak i probably should crafted bracers Again, four set, tier set, and then same with the waist, boots, do rings, haste verse, legs are crafted as well. And I even have a crafted weapon. And I did PvE. I do PvE, so I went for it with the 447 haste verse weapon, and I run the haste trinket. So yes, all haste verse is what I run. I socket for haste verse. I think haste is very, very good for solo shuffle, especially with the build I run. For talents on the left-hand side, nothing really changes in shuffle. This is what I run every single game. There is obviously one flex point right here, which is Grace of the Crane. This increases all healing taken. You can definitely make it, make it so you can go to. You can drop the Elusive Mists if you want to. I just don't like going Chi Wave, but this will give you one extra point that you could put there, which actually might be better. I don't think Elusive Mists is that good. You're not really using Soothing Mist that much. It's actually a waste of a talent. This is probably a better build than going here i just chi wave just feels so i don't have a keybind for chi wave so i would take it but <laughs> i just don't you know i just don't play it and then there's also this choice right here there's no point in going four pru reduced by two minutes because each round and shuffle is max what three and a half minutes max i've never had a four minute round and shuffle so there's no point really reducing the cooldown of four brew but you can run iron shell brew if you really want to that's good too that's fine and then the other talent i'll change is Riga peace and song chiji I get this question a lot. Uh, what should you play? When should you play it? I normally play Song of Chi Ji against double melee if I'm playing double melee. So if it's two melee versus two melee, I'll play Song of Chi Ji, especially if they don't have a range kick. So if it's like TSG versus TSG, you know, or if it's like Warrior Windwalker versus like DK Ret or something like that where they don't have range kicks, I'll play Song of Chi Ji. Ring of Peace is just good for helping my, myself kite, but most teams don't really go you. Or... It's really good when you have a caster on your team and you're going to help them kite with Ring of Peace, Tiger's Lust combo, which is really, really good. So stuff like that, obviously Ring of Peace is really good. But if there's no kicks, I'm playing Song of chi -Gi. On the right-hand side are the Mistweaver talents, and this is kind of where you can maybe do some varying builds, but I kind of just, there's really two builds that you can run. So this is the one that I've been playing. It's very good. You use Shailun's Gift, solid. You Peaceful Mending is very important with your Soothing Mist, and you have Tear of Morning, and then the bread and butter of your build is Cloud of Focus. So I'm going to try my best in this video. Please comment down below if I do a good job of it, please, to explain Cloud of Focus and how important it is in Shuffle and, and when you're casting just in general. So this is very, very important. Some other important talents, you also have Common Coalescence. So this is really good. This makes it so every time you heal with Soothing Mist, you get a stack of it. Um, that increases the absorber of your life cocoon by 3%, stacking up to 50 times. This is what makes life cocoon so freaking insane. Even in late dampening, it's very strong. Makes your life cocoon absorb just insane. And then you also you have chrysalis, which is, you know, reduce the cooldown of life cocoon by 45 seconds. Very, very important. Uh, one passive you also want to keep in mind is invigorating mists. And it's not that important when you're running haste and solo shuffle, but it is important in general. So whenever you vivify somebody, Anybody that has Renewing Mist on them also gets healed for a part of it. So keep that in mind. If I have Renewing Mist on myself and my teammate, it'll heal myself and my teammate when I Vivify because they have Renewing Mist on them. You could drop 
Shailun's Gift and go two into Misty Peaks. And then you get one talent to put wherever you want. There are some people that don't like this. I actually do kind of like it because you get the even though it doesn't proc often, the proc is pretty good when it happens. So what this does is it makes Renewing Mist have a chance to proc and envelop Mist for two seconds. And that also procs Overflowing Mist. So it, it's a pretty good proc when it, I mean, when it happens, right? There are some rounds where it doesn't, it just doesn't want to proc at all. But I do like Misty Peaks. And then you put this talent wherever you want. You can put it in Secret Infusion or Resplendent Mist. I don't think there's any really buttons up here that you really want to put it in. But yeah, it's just up to you. Do you want to have the Shailun's Gift? It's probably not that good into like Double Caster because you might get kicked on it. Or do you want to have a chance to proc, get a little bit, you know, more passive healing and then go into one Secret Infusion? It's up to you. As far as PvP talents go, it it's not as clean cut as Fist Weaving. It really does depend on what you're queuing into. In general, I play Peace Weaver pretty much every game. Like al almost every game. So Peace Weaver with Restoral is a is an amazing combo for Mist Weaver is in general. You could use Restoral. You could use it while stunned. So when you heal with Re Restoral, Peace Weaver makes everyone immune to magic effects. So this is useful for, for immuning CC if you're stunned and you don't have a eminence so you can't port well stunned so stuff like that peace weaver i think is pretty close to a mandatory talent i like it a lot i pretty much play every single game now these next two points it very very depend on what you're queuing into so if you're queuing into a some kind of class multiple classes with a range kick zen focus t you know if you're queuing into mages very very important even hunters are really annoying you can play zen focus t you could also try to juke those kicks but i if there's multiple kicks i would recommend going zen focus t so if there's a shaman and a mage if there's a shadow priest and a mage hunter mage hunter shaman uh even dk has multiple kicks you know dk shaman anything that has multiple range kicks i would recommend playing zen focus t because it's so important especially later in dampening where you're going to have to plant your feet and hard cast some heals with, to get a lot of value out of cloud of focus so zen focus t guarantees you that healing as well as precog i'll talk about that as well but zen focus t is very very important for doing that and then this third one you know grapple weapon really good versus warriors rogues hunters those are the big three that i would play grapple weapon against so or dk's as well because dk's you can immune their death strikes not immune it but they can't use death strike while they're disarmed so that's really important so <clears throat> if you queue into any of those classes immediately by default grapple weapon now you could also replace zen focus t with let's see what else we got eminence of course eminence really good talent as well so this is what makes you this this is what allows you to port while stunned and avoid cc so that's really really good so if I, this is like for example if i'm queuing to a hunter right hunters are very popular right now and they're you know i would probably play grapple weapon if they're playing with a melee and now if it's hunter mage this is where it gets a little weird if it's hunter mage i'd probably drop disarm for, for zen focus t that's what i would do because you port for the hunter trap you have peace weaver for the mage cooldown and then you have zen focus t for the kick what is also a little weird is if you're playing with a caster you like if you're playing with a warlock or a mage they're probably gonna be kicking them and not you so you could technically drop zen focus t and go like zen spheres so zen spheres is the flex talent i consider it the flex talent and this is what this does is this will put a sphere of hope on your teammate which increases the healing you do to them by 15 percent, and then you put a second sphere on an enemy where they take 10% more damage and deal 10% less damage to you. This is mostly really good for fist weaving, but Zen Sphere is the big flex talent where if there's nothing else I'm playing, I'm going to play Zen Spheres because I think it's really, really good. So keep that in mind. But those are the talents. Miss Weaver somehow was cursed with so many good PvP talents that we, we would need like five slots to be able to pick the ones that we actually need in every matchup. I kind of skipped over it, but embellishments are also pretty massive. So what I play is I obviously you want one precog so if you juke a kick and interrupt or anything you become immune to cc interrupts and pushbacks for four seconds if you're able to get four seconds to plant your feet after you juke a kick and you're able to take advantage of your cloud of focus healing uh in the mana reduction it gives and the healing bonus then you're you're gonna do pretty well the second one i use blue silk and lining so what this does is when i'm above 90 percent health i get 364 mastery that's why my mastery is so high it's just because I have that pass while I'm above 90% health. Those are the two embellishments I use. I think they're both good. I can't think of a second embellishment that could replace blue silken lining. I know people mentioned healing darts. Healing darts are RNG and they're projectiles. So what you need to do, if you were going to play them, I've tried them. I don't like them. If you, What happens is you'll get the proc and then they shoot out and they need to hit somebody. So there's a chance that you proc them and they just don't hit anybody. 
because they go out in like a straight line. So yeah, I'm not a fan of the healing darts, but there's really no other, you know, there's no other embellishment besides blue silk and lining that could be good. So those are what I run. So before we talk about rotation, let's just quickly go over some important talents. That way you understand what I'm talking about when I'm going through the rotation. So first thing, Kama Coalescence, every time you heal with Soothing Mist, your life cocoon absorb gets 3% stronger, sack up to 50 times. A little trick with this, at the start of a shuffle, at a start of arena, when if the other team is just sitting there, that's fine. All you need to do is start channeling your soothing mist on somebody, and you're gonna get two stacks at a time of calming coalescence. Because your soothing mist statue, your statue channels soothing mist, that counts as soothing mist. So you're getting two stacks every time it heals, and that means when the team finally does decide to push in, you already have a fat life cocoon. Like there's some times where um the team will push in and I have to life cocoon instantly and my life cocoon does nothing. Like it doesn't heal anything. But if they wait even 10, 15 seconds to push in, look at this life cocoon I have. Boom. 902,000 life cocoon. 900, almost a 1 million absorption shield. And you can get that by simply, if the other teams, that's fine. Let them wait. You get a, you get a juicy life cocoon. So that's a little, little trick there with comic lessons that I don't really see a lot of people do. Next up, I talk about Vigorating Mists. Every time you use Vivify, it'll also help people with, with Renewing Mist on them. You have Chigi or you have Yulon. I get them mixed up. I don't know why. I get, you have Yulon. So this makes it so your Melping Mist costs 50% less mana while it's active. And then you also, she puts a lot extra heal on people. And you get a little Chi Cocoon too, which is pretty good. I think it's like 80k Chi Cocoon, which is nice. And then, and then with Gift of the, of the Celestials, it's a one-minute cooldown. So that's a very she's a very good one-minute cooldown, especially with the new Manatee. And I'll talk about why in the healing rotation. And then, obviously, bread and butter. I keep saying it. Cloud of Focus. Every time you use Vivify or Enveloping Mist while channeling Soothing Mist, it increases the healing done by 20% of those spells. And it reduces the mana cost of those spells by 20% stacking up to three times. It's a lot of words. Pretty much every time you Vivify or Envelope Mist, you get a stack of Cloud of Focus. Each stack reduces the mana cost by 20% of those spells and then increases the healing by 20%. It's crazy. It it, 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 it really is insane. It, it's what crutches cast and Mistweaver. It, it really, we would be nothing without it. So very important passive, very important to take advantage of this. And then, you know, Shailun's gift is pretty good as well. All right, let's talk about healing rotation. And we're going to just start with the basics and work our way until you get it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. So first of all, let's just start with putting your Renewing Mist out. Always, always, always when have Renewing Mist going out. There's a chance that Renewing Mist spreads as well. So keep that in mind. Renewing Mist, you always want to have one, at least one recharging. And then always want to put one on yourself if you find yourself also taking damage. From there, it's it, it's pretty simple. You just use Vivify. I mean, yeah, to get stacks of Cloud of Focus. And use your Envelope Mist when you can. When when you have a few stacks of Cloud of Focus. Now, you do have the Vivacious Vivification. Which makes it so every 10 seconds, your Vivify becomes instant. It's a pretty good talent. It's, a, it's, a, it's you know, you get a nice little instant, instant Vivify. So what you do is you get your Renewing Mist out. And then you can instant vivify and then everyone gets healed because you have the invigorating mists instant vivify is fantastic so the reason why i really like to run haste is because envelope mist is hands down your best hot it's your best heal and there's a lot of ways that you can buff it you have cloud of focus and then you also have peaceful mending so allies targeted by soothing mist get 50 percent more healing from your envelope mist and renewing mist basic rotation is putting your new your renewing mist out spamming vivifies until you get about two or three stacks of enveloping mist or cloud of focus and you just use enveloping mist and for that matter use use five percent mana and you do a ton of healing which is fantastic you want to start weaving in your thunder focus tea so what thunder focus tea is is you have two charges of it so with cast and mist weaver you do play focus thunder you get two charges of your thunder focus tea and you're mostly going to be using enveloping mist and vivify so with enveloping mist it makes it so enveloping mist is instant instant heal and will immediately heal for a certain amount it's actually a really really good amount and then your vivify will cost no mana those are two very crazy benefits of thunder focus t and thunder focus t only has a 30 30 second cooldown to utilize thunder focus t to its full potential you need to take a look at the enemy team are there kicks available or are there not kicks available and this is really really important if there's no kicks available you can do a lot of healing so Here's what you do if there's if there's no kicks available. This is how you use Thunder Focus T. Get your renewing mist out, right? Get your, get your renewing mist out, of course. And then you're going to want to because Thunder Focus T, you could use this while channeling Soothing Mist, okay? And take a look at my mana bar as well. 
when you see me do when you do see this rotation let's just assume someone's dying right now right so you get you're doing mist out you're gonna soothing mist thunder focus t vivify vivify and then you're gonna go for an enveloping mist so for one percent man less than one percent of my mana i was able to get to three stacks of cloud of focus two stacks of cloud of focus and then use an envelop mist that it does 40 percent more healing the reason for that is because again thunder focus t makes it so vivify costs no mana right and makes it so your cloud of focus reduces the mana cost on your envelop mist and vivify so if you have more time get one more vivify in there and then throw in and, and enveloping mist that's fine but if you don't you normally are going to get cc'd quite often you're the healer so you're going to get cc'd a lot and you know maybe a kick is going to be available so what i normally do is i just get to that two stacks you can get to that three stacks though with the soothing mist thunder focus eat, vivify vivify throw one more vivify into an envelop mist and you know for two percent mana you get a 60 percent increase to your healing on envelop mist which is just absolutely insane so that's what i use when there's when there aren't any kicks available and you're you got a little breathing room maybe you got precog right this is a really good time with precog where you have one two three four boom you got four globals if you you know so i would definitely use that rotation when you have precog you got four seconds you got four global and then you might want to weave in a shaylun's gift when you can the next layer to this rotation is incorporating Yulon into your rotation. So again, she puts a pretty good hot on people. She puts a hot that makes it so they take, I believe, 10% increased healing from you. And then also makes its own enveloping mist cost 50% less mana. And by the way, all these abilities stack. The mana reduction on Yulon, the mana reduction on Cloud Focus, and then the mana reduction on Mana T, they all stack. One note about Yulon though, is she doesn't put her hot on people unless you enveloping mist. So Yulon, you can see only a Chi Cocoon but you need to use Envelop Mist to get the Enveloping Breath. That makes it so that person takes 10% more healing from you. But for the rotation, it, it's pretty it's pretty much the same. You just use Yulon first. So what I tend to do is I use, well, normally I'll use like a stack of Mana Tier too, but we'll t I'll talk about Mana Tier as well, but usually I have Mana T and then I'll Yulon and it's the same thing. Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus E, Vivify, Vivify into an Envelop Mist. It literally, it literally costs no mana. Like it, it Envelop Mist costs nothing. Look at all this healing all for no mana i mean essentially it's crazy and then you also have stacks of mana tea from all the mana you're using so that's how you use yulon yulon is really good because you also get the chi cocoon i don't know if chi cocoon went on to anybody but the chi cocoon is like a fifty thousand, maybe sixty thousand health absorption shield uh which is really good if you can get it before cc what i've started to use with yulon is if I see like a polymorph incoming or anything like that, I'll put the I'll press Yulon and then get the shield going. And then once I leave, I'll have like a Thunder Focus Envelopment Mist if there's a kick available. All right, and I mentioned it before, Mana T as well. You want to start, Mist Weavers have really like, we are weaving now. We are weaving our healing spells, our Renewing Mist, our Vivifies with our Mana T's Envelopment Mist. So what I do and what I've been doing is I don't wait to get a lot of stacks of mana T to use them. What I do is I wait until I need to press envelop mist and then I press it. So one trick with mana T that I don't think a lot of people know is you could use thunder focus T while channeling mana T. And so what I do is if there's, again, if there's kicks available, I will always go for a mana T envelop mist just to like get, a, if I need to get a heal out, that's what I'll do. So I'll, I'll, ch I'll channel like one or two stacks, get the buff and thunder focus the envelop mist. Maybe get a renewing mist into an instant vivify and just for four stacks, I, I use, what, 2% mana to get Envelop Mist to get all my Hots out, which is really, really strong. And you just do that the whole game. That's the thing is you don't stop doing that. Whenever you feel like you need to Envelop Mist, you, you just press Mana T. And again, it stacks with your Yulon and your Cloud of Focus. So if you want the maximum mana reduction, this is, this is what I do. I'll channel Mana T. I'll get a few stacks. You want like five. I'll Yulon. I'll Thunder Focus T. Vivify. Vivify. Vivify Enveloping Mist and Enveloping Mist costs 1200 mana. It what I use no mana. I literally used like 1% of my mana to do the most amount of healing you could possibly do on a Mistweaver, all because I'm taking advantage of the mana reductions and the healing bonuses. All right, and this is the full Mistweaver rotation. I might also have a clip to a game after this just to show you what it's like in real time against the real team but again you want to start off by put your renewing mist out on as many people as possible if you're playing zen sphere you want to put it on the target that's going to be taking damage 15 percent extra healing is crazy if they're only taking a little bit of damage you could just channel through the mist with your statue your statue actually does like a decent amount of healing and then just go for a little vivify 
there are going to be times where you get the instant vivify just press it the instant vivify is really really good it doesn't help with cloud of focus or anything but it doesn't you know you don't have to cast it so instant vivify you get the healing and then let's just say someone just starts using their burst rotation so i will normally try to match it with my yulon but i'll always try, i'll always go for manatee first manatee again very very important so I'll, I'll go for like a manatee hopefully it's before they start doing damage and then i'll yulon and then i'll thunder focus t vivify vivify into an envelope mist and it costs one percent mana and i did like <laughs> the most healing ever on everybody so just that's very very good and that's if there's no kicks available so if there is a kick available, I will do the same. I'll do the same exact rotation, but I'll try to just weave in instant vivifies with thunder with vivify, or instant envelop mist and instant vivifies. So I'll go for a manatee, and then I'll again keep your doing mist going as much as you can. I'll go for an instant vivify, refresh my zen sphere, and then I'll thunder focus the envelop and mist. And again, that costs one percent mana because I have the manatee going, and and let's just have to do it again boom i'll do it again into vivify renewing mist and renewing mist as well and then eventually you do have to you know you kind of do have to go for cast and spells you hopefully you juke and you get a precog and you're able to free cast this is also a good time if you are playing shaylun's gift you can i normally use shaylun's gift when i have precog so whenever i get precog boom shaylun's gift easy can't get interrupted get the buff, everything like that. So it's really, really nice. You get some guaranteed healing. Uh, the buffs are also pretty solid. I like the damage reduction and haste one, which is this one, uh, the fear. So that's really, really good as well. But again, you're just doing that rotation over and over again. You're maintaining your new mist on, on everybody. You're gonna manatee when you need to envelop a mist. Yulon as well. Thunder focus the envelop mist if you need, if there are kicks available. If there aren't, you're just gonna go for vivify, vivify into an envelop mist. Dude, look at these look at these numbers man mistweaver is so crazy i love it i love casting mistweaver so much casting mistweaver has a lot of healing but our one downfall is we don't have a lot of cooldowns so in solo shuffle you cannot waste them you basically have two cooldowns you're trying to rotate and that is your life cocoon and your revival so you have life cocoon here again i talked about it before major absorption shield especially when you have stacks of common coalescence you just get it, it the most insane absorption shield so you want to hold on to life cocoon as long as you can this is like your final cooldown that you want to press and then you also have restoral if i have one of these cooldowns available i feel like my team is fine because restoral gives the immunity to magic especially if you're running into casters and stuff like that it's really really good so these are the two cooldowns i'm trying to rotate i also have yulon that i'll use in between them so normally what i'll do is i'll press one of these cooldowns first and then i'll use yulon and then i'll use one of these and then hopefully life cocoon or yulon is back that's what I'm trying to do. Those those are the only spells we really have. It, we don't have a damage reduction or anything like that. Those are just the three spells. And it's very, very important to not overlap them. If you overlap Life Cocoon and Restoral and Yulon in one go, it's it's pretty rough. And then one cooldown, you really cannot wait. Now, it's very important. Out of every cooldown, you cannot waste it. You cannot waste Trinket. Mistweaver has a lot of healing. We have a lot of healing. We got some decent healing cooldowns, but if we don't have Trinket, it's, in my opinion, the game's over. So I'll hold on to Trinket as long as I can. There are some rounds I won't even use it. Obviously, there's rounds you do want to use it, right? If you get blinded by a rogue, you probably want to Trinket it, but stuff like that. But in general, I would hold on to my Trinket as long as I possibly can. As far as macros go, again, I don't use too many macros on my Mistweaver that much. So I have slash use 13 and 14. These are just your Trinkets right here. So if you ever have to swap them, you don't have to like drag it to your bar you just immediately it just goes on your action bar if you have these i have arena one two three macros that's just what i'm comfortable using that they're just good macros i that's i use that for in cap i use that for disarm as well arena one two three grapple weapon i have my invoke yulon which is the big red ray gun it's a toy it makes yulon red but it must be on cooldown um, as well as you know drink macro which is pretty good yulon inferno so i have taunt macros right here so you could use provoke to taunt pets to break your crowd control i'll have a link to this in them in the description it's if you get the timing right you could actually break your own traps i have it, it, there's nothing there's no better feeling than having a hunter on the enemy team switch from normal trap to diamond ice because i keep taunting his trap it's amazing again i say this every single video that i do a guide please use this life cocoon macro this makes it so you don't accidentally cocoon yourself in rbgs when someone dies or in arena if someone's mind control or something like that use this use this macro uh, party one two dispel i would say really really important you want to be very quick with the spells solo shuffle is all about uptime it's all about uptime so if you can dispel quickly and keep your team doing damage 
do it. Same thing with Tiger's Lust. I believe, yep, Tiger's Lust myself. Tiger's Lust is a very underutilized spell, but you should really get used to pressing it. Like if you get kicked or if you get rooted and you instantly Tiger's Lust around the pillar so you can't get CC'd, it's, it's so good. So try to use the Tiger's Lust a bit more. I have to spell there. Um, outside of that, I don't really have... Oh, oh, this is a really, really important macro right here. So this is the Zen Sphere target of target macro that I use. So what this does is this gonna this is gonna put Zen Sphere on the target of your target. Now I don't know if there's anyone. Okay, who's this guy targeting right here? So this should work. Yeah. So this guy, I'm not targeting this PvP dummy at all. All this macro does is it it puts Zen Sphere on the target of this target. So whoever your teammate is targeting, that's what that's what Zen Sphere is going to get put on which is so good. You don't have to switch targets and then Zen Sphere and then swap back to your teammate. Nope. It's all in one macro right there. And then you need you need to have a separate macro for your normal Zen Sphere. But still, I think it's really, really good. I think that's pretty much it for macros. I have mouse over macros for like my statue and my ROP. Those are my macros. I'll put them in the description if you want them. But there's nothing too crazy about them. And that is pretty much it for this solo shuffle guide. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And... That's pretty much it. Miss Fever is a very solid healer. Even though we're not the best, you could still make it work. I make it work, and I think it's one of, if not the most fun spec in the game. It's the most fun spec in the game. That's why I have like eight of them. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.